Hello. I'm Chelsea. I'm Lillian. And welcome to the first episode of The Book Coven. So each month, we will have a new book read and ready to discuss with you, the listener. <laughs> and we will announce each next book on our socials and at the end of the podcast. So you can read along with us and then listen to our uh, jibber-jabber. Yeah. yeah. Send us questions, hopefully. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or book suggestions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Definitely book suggestions. It's probably going to be mostly horror sci-fi Fucked theme. up. Yeah. Yeah. All the fun shit. If you're reading it like, ooh, want to know about that, we'd like it. Yeah. Ooh, yes. Mm-hmm. That's a good way. That's a good descriptor. Mm-hmm. I like that. Um, so this month was my book choice. So you're going to hear um, a lot of my annoying voice. <laughs> I picked Aurora by Kim Stanley Robinson. So Aurora is a 2015 novel by the American science fiction author. Uh, the novel concerns a generation ship traveling to Tau Ceti in order to begin a human colony. The novel's primary narrating voice is the starship's artificial intelligence, which is pretty cool and not cool, but anyway. <laughs> um, so a generation ship, in case you're unaware, is a hypothetical interstellar arc starship that travel, travels sublight speed. So it would take centuries to reach even nearby stars, um, and the original occupants of a generation ship would grow old and die, and then their descendants kind of take over, continue traveling, and uh, that's how it got its name. And Tau Ceti is the star in the solar system that is similar to our sun, which is why the ship is heading there to colonize. So Good job. Yeah, thanks. (laughs) Now, I've looked at this book online a lot, on Reddit, and seen reviews after finishing reading it, and... um, there's a lot of debate about whether yep. or not people actually liked it. Um, I don't know. What did yeah. you think? Um, I don't think I have loved and hated a book quite as much <laughs> as this. It's, yeah. I mean, it is space, so mm-hmm. it's going to be exciting. Uh, it went on way too long. Totally. I feel like he didn't even have an editor yeah. He just, he'd make a point and then ramble on for another like 50 pages mm-hmm. when it just like make it snappy. We yeah. get it. Yeah. It was like I a science textbook yeah. almost. I didn't actually like the book until they got to Tau Ceti. Mm-hmm. And for reference, that's like 150 pages in, maybe 200 yeah. pages. Yeah. Yeah. Almost I halfway wanted, point. I had to put the book down. <laughs> this, uh, this definitely took, of all our book clubs, I think this took everyone the longest to read just because it was the hardest to kind of get through. Oh, it was a humdinger. Yeah. I mean, I did end up enjoying a lot of it at the end, but yeah, yeah. it could have been cut down to like half the size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it kind of ended up sounding like a history textbook almost. Yeah. Right? Like I, if this actually happened, this is the way it would be written. Mm-hmm. Like it was it was so yeah, you'd real. read about it in school and like want to slit your wrist yeah like, oh my god <laughs> this is my assignment yeah we're listening to a ship <laughs> i think the strongest it was was when they just got to tau Ceti and they yes. landed on the planet mm-hmm. and then when the ship was the narrator and all the people were asleep yeah because the ship was the only character that I actually connected with. Everyone mm-hmm. else, I hated so much. <laughs> That's okay. Um, everyone grew up on a ship, right? So it's yeah, so. They're, uh, I thought I was socially. Yeah, they're no. Yeah, oh, they don't know. Wow. Well, because their life is their work to just make the ship yeah, keep yeah. propelling forward, right? Um, but one of the things I noticed, and I guess I wouldn't have thought of this because uh, it's not my forte, but uh, <laughs> a lot of people. Their beef with this book was the fact that Robinson uses old technology. So apparently everything that he uses as descriptors for the propulsion of the ship and stuff like Mm. that has been around for a long time. So the fact that he set the book so far in the future, like they leave Saturn at, I think, 2545. Yeah. There should be better technology. Like they should have already had the cryogenic freezing. Why even send people... On a generation well, ship, knowing that zoo de- devolution is a thing. I didn't even think of that. Right? It's just yeah. weird. Yeah. My first thought when reading the book is like, why is this a generation ship and where's cryogenic freezing? 
Yeah. Like, why is that not, why would Every, you yeah. start a voyage and yeah. not have that? <laughs> Everyone I mentioned this book to was like, oh, so they go into hypersleep and wake right? up. Like, yeah. Nope. No, <laughs> you, you wish. <laughs> you fucking wish oh, they fuck. did. I mean, I guess it wouldn't be a book then. This feels more like if we tried to do this kind of trip in like 50 years. Yeah, they're eager right? beavers. Yeah. I mean, you can't blame them, you know. If you can get into space, people are probably going to be like, yeah, let's fucking do it. Well, the fact that, yeah, that we're so interested yeah. in doing it right now and we've got fuck all <laughs> to, like, actually get us anywhere. Um, all right, we got a yeah. ship. Let's go. <laughs> How are we going to live? Who cares? Who cares? Let's, let's go. figure, we'll figure it, out it out along yeah. the way. Yeah. Um, but my question is, who the hell would have gone through with that in the first place? It's like, oh, I'm a scientist. Yeah. I'd love to go on this ship and kind of fuck over all my descendants. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to die. I'm not going to know where this is going. And I get it. You have hope. Yeah. And you're, like, super excited about the future of the species and, like, <sighs> Should you getting be, there. But, yeah, exactly. Do you, do you need to be? <laughs> <laughs> I've kind of fucked up. I wouldn't have gone. No. I would go to space not as the first round. If it's been successfully done, yeah, and you can just go real easy, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. But not if you know you're dying on that yeah. ship. They don't even get to succeed in what they're doing, yeah. And they force like 300 people to be space explorers, yeah. And their whole life is to fucking terraform a planet. That's so much pressure. That's a lot of pressure for just, such few people. I just want to wake up, fucking go to work, yep. sleep. They're like, oh, yeah. we gotta fucking make this planet. And not all of them are allowed to have kids and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. like having your entire life planned for you, like you, you're living in this biome. You travel these when you're Mm -hmm. a, a teenager to kind of get grip on you know life to learn a little bit more but if, but you come back home and you do work yeah. like you just work for the ship to propel us Hard so it's work. like it's important science work i know Ugh. like it seems important but yeah it's it's a lot of pressure and again fucking cryo sleep yeah <laughs> i mean like you know you're not even gonna get to that planet that's such a bummer <laughs> <laughs> it's fine they get to live in their little fucking spaceship but i feel like their minds would be more better used on earth figuring out how to get there faster or mm -hmm. um without well, having you i think they said do most of the people that first went on were just like rich assholes oh, okay that so, makes sense i let them go yeah because <laughs> <laughs> they um, have to be smart enough to at least get through all the ship but i guess yeah. de um the mom debbie Right? Yeah, she was good. I she wish was, there was more yeah. of her. I, I liked her blunt attitude and everything. Spoiler alert, she dies. Oh. That's another thing I liked about this book <laughs> is how depressing it got. Oh my God. So it was great. Fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone dies. Well, but it helps that the ship was narrating. Yeah. Right? I did like that the ship was narrating because for most of it, the ship is kind of thinking, like, how do I make a narration? And, and it, like, it gets a little annoying because mm -hmm. it's describing narrating yeah. and talking <laughs> and you're like okay we, we already know this like yeah. we're, we're human again edit, edit it out <laughs> yeah just, just snip a little bit um but i like that ship ended up developing a consciousness in the mm -hmm. end mm -hmm. so you could kind of tell like halfway through the book when everyone starts dying um ship is just saying like 72 people died like <laughs> no big deal because it's just here's Oopsie the goopsie. number and here's the death right yeah. this this happened um but then later, when everyone's dying, they're actually naming them, mm -hmm. which is like, they actually care. Why are their names so stupid? It's 2545. I know, or but... Or 26. It's 170. So does, like, <laughs> Phil and Carl, does that just devolve into, like, yes. fucking Nexicon and fucking Elron and fuck... Hey, Elron's a cool name. Bring it Not back. Not with these people. No, no, it was weird. There were a lot of weird names, but uh, I like Freya. It's a good name. <sighs> is a good name that's I like an old name they brought it back you know yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that whole the first two sections of the book is just her growing, growing up. up but it's literally like freya goes outside but it was so real she talks to people she's like i don't want to do any of this i yeah. don't want to be here i just she like didn't know what she i don't know she just walked so around yeah. yeah she's like i don't i just want to meet people whatever so she became yeah she was starship girl like but reading about that it's not... Not interesting, no. No. Definitely not interesting. No, no, no. It was interesting when people died, but I guess that's how you can tell what kind of books we like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In such horrific ways, too. Oh, my God, I know. Ooh, they blow, so like, blind. a spaceship door up yeah, at one point. that's when 72 people just fucking... Damn. Dead. Oh, and then dead. there's, like, a... Um, there's mass suicide at parts. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. 
Well, cause, yeah, yeah just, man, that's that's sad. But it, like again, it felt so real. I would like this would have all happened. I would have killed myself for sure. Well, because you're not only do you not want to be there, but you think that you're a burden. Mm-hmm. Like there's no more food. Maybe if I'm gone, the food will last yeah, longer muffin. for these guys. Yeah. So it's it's sweet. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Did nothing. Yeah, I don't know. The, the the ship's growing consciousness was definitely like the developing mm-hmm. aspect of the whole thing. Um, character development was can, like characters did develop throughout the story for sure. There was so much that they were going through, <laughs> <laughs> which yeah. like yeah, I don't I don't. It's hard to know what you do in those situations. Um, well, you've never found yourself adrift in space on a planet that it's it's tough to say. <laughs> you know, maybe in a past life. <laughs> Oh, we should talk about our our wine. Oh yes, let me um grab we, it. Uh, we have Apothic Crush. Mm-hmm. It's a smooth red blend, mm-hmm. 2015 California. Oh yes, it's our pairing for the evening. Shall I uh, read the back? Yes. <clears throat> <laughs> the first taste entices, stimulating the senses. Mm. The next taste ignites, arousing the passion. Excellent. A decadent red blend that combines red fruit flavors with notes of caramel and a velvety smooth mouthfeel. Excellent. So we haven't tried this one before. No. It's pretty good. This is a uh, this is our Aurora pairing. Oh, let me take a. I have fucking three drinks. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. It tastes like space travel. It's arousing the senses. Mm-hmm. The <laughs> mouth is velvety smooth. Yeah, it's not bad. We are not wine connoisseurs, but um. <laughs> What do you mean? Would recommend. Would recommend. Yeah. It's it's light, but it's it is very sweet. So try not to drink the whole bottle. Maybe. I mean we'll see how it goes. Come on now. <laughs> drink the whole bottle. <laughs> if you must. Um Yeah, so I, I I did like when they landed back on Earth. Yes. I didn't like how long them getting back to Earth took. I liked them discovering mm-hmm. cryogenics and um I, what I really loved when they got back to Earth, though, was how they were discovering it like a new planet. Yeah. Which, very cool. You because, don't really get to see that a lot. And well, we don't get sure. to experience yeah. it. And, like, it, it made me look differently at, at the planet. Like, the fact mm-hmm. that she thinks that the radiation from the sun is going to harm everyone. Like, how are you out here? <laughs> and, like, everything's so vast and scary. It's, yeah. Because it's so big compared. To, and they were comparing everything to the biomes, which was cool. I kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, I love how, like, unimpressed they are with so much about it. Yeah. And humanity. People just, okay. were so cruel to them. Oh, yeah. Like, you're a traitor for not oh my God, I sticking know. with this. Fuck you. Why don't you go up there and exactly. try this shit You try out? it. Yeah. You know that every other adventure has failed. Why wouldn't, mm-hmm. like, why wouldn't you make, make your way home? I don't know. You can't really judge I'm them sorry, for that. Sorry, they had to come back and deal with us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what have we done to you? <laughs> We didn't colonize. Uh huh. It wouldn't have happened. No. Well, because th- they never heard from everyone that uh, in Tau Ceti, right? Yeah. So that's the thing. You land, you, f- you find out that the place you're trying to inhabit I kills know. you instantly. Like, what were they supposed to do? Their whole ship was made to get them there. Yeah, exactly. And that's it. Yeah. So when it failed, like, what the fuck else were they expected to do? Right. Let me just shit out all the supplies we need yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah. And start again? Yeah, no. Um, I thought it was cool that they did were able to split the ship. Like half of them yeah. went to Planet F, which I think they called Iris. Right? Yeah, and then the other half were like, "Nah, fuck it, we're piecing Bye. out." Because it's the, it makes the most sense, which I totally get. Yeah, how they made that distinction, like how they decided, like this makes the most sense for our survival. Planet F is likely to have the same pathogens just because it's so close, mm-hmm. and obviously asteroids. Mm-hmm. Um. <clears throat> I don't know, though. I, f- I think I would have stayed. To go on to Planet F? Yeah. Because they didn't know about cryogenics when they left back for Earth. So mm-hmm. their thought was that our descendants will at least get to live. Yeah. I don't really care. I, was, yeah. I just wanted to see how I mean, terraforming went, which would obviously have taken, what, 3,000 years or some yeah. crap. So, <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't see how it goes. Yeah. But I, I feel like you'd fear, feel more useful if you stayed. I mean, I still wouldn't condemn everyone who left. No, no. Right? Um, fuck, I don't know. I, it's a dilly of a pickle. I mean, in my heart of hearts, I probably would have offed myself. Oh, okay. Because I just... Gotcha. It's too wanna, much. Yeah, it's yeah. 
fuck it. Yeah. I tried. <laughs> Did my best. Bye. Bye. Um, <laughs> Planet F. I mean, there was more evidence that it would have failed going totally. to Planet F. Yeah. And, I mean, technically it did. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't hear from them again, you can yeah, assume they're, they're all dead. dead. It's been 20 years. And they're dead. <laughs> um, so. I mean, they were dicks anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah, especially if, like, if, if I had been kidnapped by them mm-hmm. and they tried, they were killing people. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't stick with them. Like, yeah. Fuck those guys. I probably. You light them all on fire. <laughs> probably would have left, just gone back to Earth. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's just, so ideally, like, I would have wanted to stay, but because, yeah, everyone who did end up staying was, like, they were really pathetic in their actions. Yeah. Like, that's not how you behave when you have such mm-hmm. big decision decisions to make. And Yeah. Also, like, like they're going back to a planet they know that can sustain human exactly, life. Exactly. And it's already, yeah, fine, like, everything's set up. So I would, yeah, I would have just gone back to everything. Exactly. Well, that, I like... One thing that um, I think Badham said was that uh, he had the whole concept that life can only survive on its home planet. Yeah. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Like, because we, there's a reason we're here Mm -hmm. biologically. Mm -hmm. And obviously this is our perfect planet. I mean, if we don't fuck it up. Um, And (laughs) we we are already fucking up. Um, And then he's saying that's why life hasn't come our way either. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, that's up for speculation, obviously. Um, (laughs) but that's for a different book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that made it, you know, I don't know. It still made it feel hopeless because no matter, they're saying that every yeah. single mission failed. And even the people who went to Saturn and were terraforming Saturn had to come back to Earth so they didn't get like mm-hmm. space sickness. It's such a, <laughs> you think it's just going to be a, a nice romp through yeah. space and no. then halfway in, nope, we're all going to No, there. yeah, exactly. Um, but it reminded me of uh, what, Neil deGrasse Tyson had said too, because everyone's super pumped about like going to Mars and mm-hmm. humans are going to, you know, if we fuck this planet up, it's okay. We'll just go to Mars. Back up. Yeah. But he's even said like, as cool as it is and as, as much as he wants to go to Mars, mm-hmm. like this is easier. Fixing earth is easier yeah. and like making this work is easier and faster. So let's not, you know. <laughs> It's not fucking all. No, but we're humans. We get all excited. We do. It's so true. Space travel. That's cool. Let's go. It's so cool. <laughs> and I get it. Totally. I know. I, I wouldn't want to space travel personally, but that's Ever? small spaces. I If I could teleport, sure. But being but in mean, a imagine, spaceship, yeah, but it's not my jam. I imagine with such extensive tra- space travel, they would make a huge spaceship. Like, yeah, I guess like even, this shit yeah, like, was. I feel like you're in a city. Yeah. Almost, so. It's not like you're just, I mean, like, the tiny spaceships that yeah. you see where they're all, like, stuffed together. Mm-hmm. No. No. Oh, God, no. Fuck off. If I yeah. could, like, jog through a spaceship, sure. <laughs> not that I would. I don't think, I don't think I'd be dead. Because sometimes I'm, like, if I'm just in a panic state and mm. I'm outside, I'm claustrophobic. You know, I'll be in an yeah. open field and I'll still feel claustrophobic. <laughs> so, like, knowing that there's a ceiling above me rather than a sky. Yeah. I don't know. I think when I'm, like, 60, I could go to space because mm. if it goes tits up and I die horribly, you. Well, I mean, I'm 60. Yeah. I've had a good run, so. <laughs> I like how 60 is your, like, old yeah. age limit. <laughs> I mean, like, look, There's I so many, many, I so many years left. rough. I'm not going to be like Jane Fonda okay. and age yeah. well. I know I'm going to be a shriveled heap. So 60s, like, oh, Jane Fonda. if I make it to 60, that's good. Okay. Okay. So I'm just you. go to space, do drugs. Yeah. <laughs> just let it happen. Yeah. End your days there. <laughs> See what happens. Uh, All right, where's this, uh, where's this ship going? You just hop on, you know, yeah. no plan. <laughs> you just pay them a lot of money. Hey, just take me. Yeah. It'll be cool. Well, we're I won't pull my own weight, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck. That's the thing. So you're a farmer. Uh, I'm 60. Mm, no. And my knees don't work. No, thank you. Maybe by then we'd have uh, biomechanics that are better. So I fucking you'd have hope so. robot legs. Guys, I need a whole new body. <laughs> I know I could eat right and exercise, but but your knees, I, you just yeah, need some I need robotic some knees. New knees, yeah. yeah, that's okay. Maybe been reconstructed enough, mm-hmm. but they're kind of like held together with glue and <laughs> willpower. I'm picturing glue and popsicle sticks. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a disaster there. 
So yeah, just fix me up. Put me in like a nice hot mm. robot body. Oh, okay. Yeah, full body, not just full the legs body. or the knees. I mean, if we're gonna go <laughs> that, we may as well just do the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then you can just transfer your consciousness over to a full yes. fucking beast. I'd be so successful. <laughs> <laughs> if you could just move your body. <laughs> She's not full cripple, guys. Yeah, it's no. Weird. I mean, it's really not that bad. It's no, just, uh, you're, you're not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Just it running, would just be easier to have a robot is body. Hard, okay. <laughs> That's fair. It's hard for everyone. I'm sure Jane Fonda thinks so too. Mm. <laughs> <sighs> oh yeah, and the people on Saturn. Mm. So those fucks. They didn't like. They mentioned that there was shit on Saturn, but they didn't, yeah, they didn't. quite mention that there was an entire city until like near the end. And there's stuff all around, right? Yeah. There's well, Saturn, there's stuff Mars, on Mars. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. I don't, I feel like I'd be more like willing to go to Saturn to terraform. Yeah, because like you can come back. Yeah, like and you have to come back. Mm -hmm. As much as the space sickness thing is kind of a drag. <laughs> Such a bummer. Such a bummer. Land back on Earth mm -hmm. and you die. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah, so like how. When they got back to Earth, all of them were crippled. Oh, Almost my God. All and them. they were all just dying. Yeah. So sad. Uh, like, they tried so hard to, like, make it back. <laughs> like, everything was so hopeless. Everything went as wrong as it could possibly mm -hmm. go for them. Yeah. But Freya still kept a, a good head about it. No, she was depressed as no, fuck. No, yeah, like, at first. But, yeah. a, but as soon as she started, like, wave jumping and, like... Yeah. Getting in the water, See, she was super happy. That's where they lost me, because I went to California, and the waves gave me a massive panic attack. I love the waves. I don't see how that would make you like, oh, Earth is great. Yeah. I love she the almost waves. drowned. She did, yeah. But remember, the book started with her in water, so she has a good connection oh, yeah. with water, right? She's so she fish. finally got to go to the actual ocean, like yeah. an actual Terran ocean. I think that was cool. That's I don't know. nice. Yeah. Have her legs that she can't feel. Flop around. I know. Hey, but at least they had boots for her. That's That's cool. really cool. That's cool. I like that. <laughs> Super useful. <sighs> Try this wine again. Mm. <laughs> Wine's still good. Sometimes by like the fifth sip, you're like, wow, this sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think I like that. Apothic never lets us down. No. No, it does not. Okay, so I can, do you have anything else to add? As far, like, do I recommend this book? Yes, mm. but it's not going to be something I feel like you're going to sit down and really read and read and just, yeah. It's it, like, if you have like a five, ten minutes every day to spare, fucking give this a try. Yeah. I, I per, it's hard to say. That yeah. No, that's fair. Um if you okay, so if you're someone who's really into um I was going to say dry reading, but like <laughs> like yeah, hey. if you already enjoy reading science textbooks and stuff, I feel like yeah. this will interest you a lot because it feels so realistic. Like yes. all of the mechanics behind propulsion. Like he he had um Kim Stanley Robinson had a friend helping him kind of figure out um, all the mechanics behind it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's also real. I, yeah, I don't know. So it's, it's a, it's a, a little depressing, but it's also it also gives you that new insight look. Like I felt a little good after I finished it because I was looking at our planet a little differently, mm -hmm. and I think that's nice. So I was looking at Earth and I was like, oh, you know what, the sun is. I mean, don't look at the sun, yeah. <laughs> but it, like it, it is really cool. It is, mm -hmm. Everything is like you, we don't need to leave to already see interesting things. All you have to do is go up north for a weekend and stare mm -hmm. at the stars. Yeah. Right. Beautiful. And you'll realize. Yeah, exactly. How beautiful it is. Yeah. Um, and apparently now I haven't read any of them, but apparently Robinson's Mars trilogy is a lot better, so I'd yeah. be curious to try that. I like like he's a good writer, totally. But yeah, this mm -hmm. one it just it goes off off the rails a bit. Of, like there's a section where they kind of go into a civil war in the ship, mm -hmm. and it's just over and over. We 
that here's what we think we should do. Yeah. I don't think we should do that. And just like back and back forth. And back forth. and forth. And yeah. Like no resolution. While yeah. the ship's just like, wow, humans really suck at making decisions. Yeah, yeah. And it's true. Honestly, I'm surprised they only had the two <laughs> civil instances, right? Like yeah. one in 67 and then that oh, one. Oh, fuck. We would have lost feel like, it. I feel like it would have yeah. happened so frequently. Yeah. I don't know. But I guess it doesn't happen that... Well, it happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to recommend it, but... Did I enjoy it? I don't know. It was cool. It was cool. I I would try the Mars trilogy. Yeah. Maybe. Because, uh, yeah, exactly. His writing's good. And it, the story had a great message in the end. Like, we, we don't need to leave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, like, how hopeful humans can actually be. And how important they think sustaining the species is, is really neat. Because, um, I mean, in the end, it, it really is an original story. Yeah, it's kind of empowering. I think that the characters like took the where what they were meant to do and said, "Fuck it, we're going back to Earth because we want to further ourselves, and we don't want to just follow the predetermined path. Mm-hmm. Like we didn't want to be on this ship, so we're going yeah, back yes, anyway, yeah. right? Um, and yeah, and even the people who are restoring the beaches on Earth. Yeah, that's nice. That's that's, oh, that's I nice. Love that job, right? And that's Fuck. kind of like hopeful because they're like, you know what? We we want to make this our home again. Yeah. And beaches are like, it. it there's certain things like going to the water. It, it is so soothing and it does make mm-hmm. you feel better about everything because you kind of just forget about everything. Mm-hmm. Even if you're not swimming, just being on a beach, mm-hmm. hearing the, yeah. the water. It's nice. Good on you, beach people. Good on you. Hippies. You. They're the way to go. Beach hippies. We'll save the day. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So, what's your pick for uh, for next time? So, um, my pick is called The Honey Farm by Harriet Alita Lai. That's spelled L Y E. Mm. So, everyone knows. It's like rye. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, uh, So, brief synopsis Uh, Cynthia decides to save her dying farm by offering free rooms in exchange for labor. But something sinister lies beneath the surface. Q piano thing. Oh my god! <laughs> and there's there's bees that are dying. The bees. Oh, no, the, the bees. bees. <laughs> <laughs> so is um, Nick Cage in this book? <laughs> Maybe that's what the sinister thing lying yeah. beneath the surface. Not the bees. <laughs> <laughs> Should be good, you know. Uh, yeah. it, it has like a fall-ish cover. Okay. It seems mm. maybe like. Like, you know, it's Halloween soon. Mm-hmm. Wind it down with yeah. a nice fucked up farm. Perfect. No, this is good. You can expect. Maybe we. Yeah. Yeah, no. We'll do a lot of spooky stuff, sci fi yeah. stuff. I'm going to try. I mean, as far as likes go, I like the fucked up stuff and mm-hmm. then like embarrassing romantic books. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I, I don't like any romantic books. Not <sighs> like fun romance. Like if a rom-com in book form. Oh, I would not read that. Oh, I fucking I, I'm okay watching a rom-com, you know, a good old-fashioned mm. rom-com. I just don't think I'd have the patience I'm to read it. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> oh, crap. That's gonna be one of the picks. Oh, one of the picks for <laughs> sure. I'll read about aliens, sci-fi, because, okay, until like recently, I, I wasn't even reading um fiction oh shit yeah it's all just come home pull out a dense textbook kind yeah. of yeah <laughs> I'm gonna learn me some stuff I, I don't know i like learn reading so you'd think i'd like aurora better but mm. yeah, it's so <laughs> fucking dry yeah all dry yeah um but I, i've been liking the these good stories we've been reading lately so yes too bad we didn't do podcast for um final girls oh shit. That was a good one. Uh, yeah yeah we've been in this book club <clears throat> for a few months mm-hmm. started it's off like a year yeah shit yeah look at us we're reading so consistently for smart. a year <laughs> <laughs> that was a good book though so we're not going to do a podcast about it but you should read it. Yes. The, I think The Final Girls and um, The Girls, I think, was the other one. Yeah, that one was good, too. It's about a cult. Mm-hmm. Final Girls is about murder. Yeah. So The Girls was a lot like the Manson family murders. Yes. Um, so if you kind of know about that and you like it and you just want to hear a newer retelling of it, it was pretty much that. 
Um, and it was very cool. Mm-hmm. And then Final Girls was, uh, it's not just full-blown, you know, murder every scene and, and yeah. suspense every scene. It was following a girl who Lord has survived. Through that. Poor girl. I know. And, like, the twists. <laughs> There's two oh, twists in there's that? so many twists. Oh, fuck. And they're good. Get they're right. good. They're not Sit cheap. Down. They're not like, you think like, oh, I think I know what's happening. No. You do not. Fuck. You do not know what is happening. Yeah. It's great. Jesus Christ. I, yeah, I really don't think I predicted that. No, me neither. Then. I was like, I had like four things in my mind where I was like, this this could happen. This mm-hmm. could happen. And none of that happened. And they're going to make a movie out of it soon. Oh, so. that's it. So read it before the movie. Because yes. you don't want to. Get on it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so I guess read Aurora if you want Mm -hmm. to be excited and bored at the same time. At the same time. Yeah. And then, um, (laughs) so the Honey Farm, read along with us if you send in questions. Oh, we'll answer them. We could answer them. Yeah, you can send in discussion questions, things you'd like us to talk about with the book. Yeah, because we don't really know what we're doing, guys. It's true. In case you (laughs) couldn't tell. So um, accurate. Yeah. You can give us suggestions. We might read them. We might not. I personally <laughs> want to read a variety of books. Yeah. Yeah. We don't just need, you know, murder porn. Darkness. Yeah. I mean, I have a lot of that. I mean, I'm going to read a lot of that. Yeah, but we'll, we'll pick that on our own too, yeah. right? Yeah. So, like, if we get suggestions, because I'm all for, like, hopeful retelling books. Um, like, I really enjoyed, I don't know what it's called, that Great book from Japan. Oh, with the, um, yeah. It was fantastic. Oak. I know you didn't like it as much. Not Oakja. That's some film. Hashtag Netflix. <laughs> Netflix. Um, it's something like that. Oka. Oak something. I don't recall. Was it? I don't think so. I think it had a lengthy title. I swear it was Oak something. We'll figure it out for next time. And, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was also kind of depressing. I fucking hated it, but... <laughs> I liked it. Have a, have a roll with have that. Have at thee. Yeah, yeah. Have fun. All right. Um, so if you made it this far, <laughs> thank you uh, for listening to The Book Coven. We have been Chelsea. And Lillian. Yeah. Um, or is it and Lily? Chelsea and You know what? Let me know what you guys think. <laughs> Should I be Lillian? Should I be Lily? Up for debate. I will not yeah. be Lil. That's Putting fair. That off the table. That's fair. That sounds like what your brother yeah. like. There's Yo, only, Lil. There's only <laughs> one person that I allow to call me Lil. Only one person calls you Lil? Yeah. Mm. And, um, but she says it in like a Lil. Oh. Kind of way. Like, <laughs> hey, Lil. 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 <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. So Short I form. accept that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Don't call her Lil. Don't do it. Yeah. Fucking everyone's going to do it. Yeah. Um, okay well uh yeah if you have anything you think we should be talking about in this give us a go hit it up is this too long too short i don't know oh yeah yeah what, you, what do you want what do you <laughs> what do you want from me holly <laughs> want <laughs> all right well we're gonna go eat donuts yeah space donuts yeah mm, ooh. space brownies bye see y'all <laughs>